All right. Good morning. Welcome into another edition of Catching Up with Tommy Mack here on 1010XL's podcast platform at 1010XL.com on their Facebook page at 1010XL Facebook page and streaming on the relevant app, the group messaging chat app uh, with live interactive podcasts. And now, now we got video. Hey, good morning, everybody on relevant. We got audio. We got video, interactive chat. I mean, it's unbelievable what this thing can do. So easy to connect, so easy to reach, build, grow an audience publicly or just having private communications. Better than, it's easier than Zoom. It's easier than Zoom. It's unbelievable. Go check it out. R E L E V N T, the relevant app on Google Play and the Apple Store. All right, lots to get into. I'm going to start with Jags. Got to get into the NFL too. Lots going on. And I want to get into Aiden Hudson a little bit. And Graham, of course, you're always welcome to chime in. Um, but I got some concerns about him, and I want to talk about him. All right, we'll get into that in a little bit. I do like the fact, look, you know, I think so far, um, Trent Balky, Doug Peterson, you know, I, I give them, I give them a, a B, a solid B, maybe B plus for what they've done so far. I think they've gotten some really good players. Um, I don't care about how much money it costs. I was just telling Graham, you know, these one-year, ten-year, ten million, twelve million dollar deals to prove it. I mean, that's the market. Are you kidding me? Like, here, here's twelve million to go prove yourself. You're like, you mean twelve million that if I save it right, I'll never have to work again. Twelve million? I only need one year for that, really. Well, dude, Holy with, cow. with the cap the way it is now, it's 10, unbelievable. Ten mils, nothing. A, it, right, so a drop what? in the bucket. And you know it's funny. And then you, you you hear people like, "Well, it's only one year deal, so who cares?" I'm like, I I get that. You know, it's not like you're locked in for years, but it's still ten, twelve right. million for one right. year. Exactly. Okay, no problem here. It's a hundred dollar bill, but unbelievable. But I think overall, uh, they've done well. Laquan Treadwell does come back. I like. I do like it. I do like it. Look, I'm still addressing wide out in the draft. I believe at some point. Um, or another tight end, although I like Arnold. Um, but I I, uh, I think having Treadwell back kind of completes. Like Treadwell, to me, he's got the size and the speed to be a number one, right? He hasn't played like a number one, so I can't really say I'm comfortable him being a number one. However, I think Kirk could be a one or a two. Right. And Zay Jones, I think, or and I think Kirk could be a three, which would be wild with that speed. And then Zay Jones could be a two or a three. And Laquan could be a one or a two. You know what I mean? So is he going to be a dominating number one? No. Will he give you some plays down the field? Yes. Will he will he um block hard? Yes. Will he run the right routes? Yes. Is his hands great? No. They're okay. They obviously need to be better. Any team, you know, Marvin Jones is a more sure-handed guy out there. But let me throw this at you. Um, if you, you you got Treadwell, and again, you're still addressing it, so don't don't get all upset here. Uh, Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, Marvin Jones Jr., Evan Ingram, Dan Arnold, J. Robin Etienne. Now, last two coming off injuries. So that's an issue, right? I mean, that... We don't. I, I'm. I think they're coming mm-hmm. back healthy, right? I think they are. Uh, Liz Frank. I don't know much. You know, I've never had a Liz Frank. I've had the ACL. You come back from an ACL, no doubt about it. Especially today, and you do it quickly. Uh, the Liz Frank's a little bit different. Liz Frank is where you smush. Yeah, you like heel to your toes. You know what I mean? It's like it gets caught and someone falls on it and just. It's like an accordion, but it doesn't come back. You know what I mean? It's, it's like if a, it's like if a car ran over your foot or something. It's like getting rear-ended. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, Which I almost yeah. got rear-ended today. Black Jeep, whatever you were. Jeep, gray, maybe it's gray. I don't know. Man, you would have killed me. And I would have killed you if I would have survived. Because I, I literally, I got in a wreck like a month ago. It wasn't even a wreck, but it was enough damage. Driving my daughter to school. Um, you know, it's it, the other guy's fault. He paid their insurance paid for whatever. I just got over that, you know, and even with her in it and this, holy cow, he just, he lucky finally looked up, look up. I'm guilty of it too, but look up. That's all I'm going to say on that one. But I do, I do like that. Like if you throw all those players together, that's, those are nice weapons for, 
uh, for for Trevor, right? You you cover all physically on paper. Of course, they got to they got to catch the rock and you know, make tackles miss and get open and all that. I'm just saying on paper, that's pretty darn good. Can I ask you an X's and O's wide receiver question? Sure. In is while while we're on this topic of of who can be a one, who can be a two, a three. In today's NFL, does a one need to be a true every down outside receiver? A true number one? Yeah. Does he need to be? No, because but like, that's who he is. Because you know what like, I mean? yeah, because like when you think of a number one receiver, yeah. I'm thinking of that. That's who I think of. I think of a guy that's always outside. Oh, but, right. Cooper Cup's a wide receiver one. He's inside all the time. He moves inside all the time. He moves all I over think the place. sometimes people, and I get it, too, you know, the X you're thinking is always left. Right. X doesn't always have to be left. He can right. be right. Right. He could be inside. But a true number one to me is just a dominating, go-to, scare the crap out of the safety, number one. A Devontae Adams is a, a number one. Right. You know and, what? Like, and they move point, him around. Absolutely. Dude, Devontae... Yep. The horizontal pre-snap movement. Oh, totally. With Devontae. I, I know he's on a new team now, but like what the way LaFleur calls that offense, yeah. Devontae is, is never stationary. No, you're he's right. He's all over the place. Totally. And I totally. think with Kirk, the, the, there's kind of like this generic thought of like, oh, he plays inside, so he's not. No, alone. no, no. He can play outside too. That's definite right. without right. But he's look, his his the name of his game is speed. The name of Zay Jones game is speed. Laquan Treadwell can run. Evan Ingram can fly. Dan Arnold can run. ETN can fly. <laughs> you catch where I'm going here? You know what I'm saying? Like, this is... Jamal Agnew. Ni- nice. And then you got Jamal Agnew hopefully coming back. Thank you. I mean, I, I like it. And then you're going to draft. And then you got a couple other guys maybe. So I well, that's I like it overall, man. That was, was kind of one more, one more thing I wanted to run by you is I now that you've re-signed... Treadwell, I'm not sure that you address receiver. I still would. If I'm the GM, I still would. Yeah. The, I don't, but yeah. You look at it, these roster spots are filling up quick, man. You got Kirk, Zay Jones, Jamal Agnew, uh, Laquan Treadwell, Marvin Jones. That's five receivers right yeah. there. But if you if you draft number 33 at wide out, he's moving to the top of the list. Of, co- oh, of course he is. Three. Of course he is. At least for, to give him a shot at so it. So then at that point, know. does that mean you're moving on from LaVisca? Are you trying to Fisk find a trade got a partner? Lot to prove. I, you know what? I, I don't know. I Is don't really know. He didn't. He doesn't show enough. He shows spurts, and it's not. It's not even actually. He shows glimpses, which is less than spurts. Right. And the glimpse, you want to be like, oh man, right? Everyone goes back to the fifty-eight yarder last year. It was dynamite. It was incredible. Like he looked like Marshawn Lynch running down the damn field. <laughs> but that's it. You know, drop too many balls. Doesn't break yeah. enough tackles. Isn't, you know, there's no Debo Samuel comparison. It doesn't have the, the shake. It's not even close. Dude. It not have the shake. you got to have the shake to be Debo. So, But anyway, I like that. And look, if if LaVisca finds a way, then they find a way to use him. Because you know? regardless, whether you, draft a, whether you draft a guy or not. Maybe he's your running back you're looking for. <laughs> right. I, you know what I mean? Right. I don't know. You never know what Doug Peterson, what he's thinking. Whether, Philly, Philly, baby. Whether you draft a receiver or not. LaVisca last year when Chark went down for the rest of the season, at least on paper, was wide receiver two. Yeah. He's five at best now? Yeah. Four at best, hey, I, I guess? It's an overhaul. It's, it's an overhaul. I know. It's, that's I mean, what I'm it saying. Is. It's it like, is what it is. I like it. I like it a lot. And I tell you what, let me throw this at you since we're talking offense. Okay, so um, uh, Robinson hasn't signed the tag yet. Right, but let's just say he's going to be here. All right, let me throw this starting five at you: Robinson at left tackle, Little at left guard, Shatley for now. Linder may retire. It sounds like he's going to retire. And you know what, Brandon, you had a great career when you, especially when you're healthy. I, injuries suck. I had two of them. They they suck, and they and they they take you out of your game. And I mean, after my foot injury, I never played another down. I mean, it's it's. At least you can walk away with a nice career. You can say, you know what? It's just time for me to move on, to walk away. The game didn't end on you. You just chose. If you go that route. If not, throw Linder in there at center. Which And Shatley's fine. And they may, they, they're may they going to dress in a draft. But just say this. So Robinson, Little, Shatley, Scherf. 
And is it Sharif? Someone said Sharif the other day on the radio. No, it's Sharif. Sure. It's Sharif. Sure. Sharif. Sure. Quit playing with names. And then, by the way, my number one pick is also playing right tackle, and that's Neil. How do you like that for an wow. offensive line? Now, you got Taylor as your swing, and you got Barch as your, and Will um, yeah, I was gonna say, Richardson don't Jr. as yeah. your, your backups, and maybe Barch could play center. Maybe. A lot of guards could play center if given the opportunity. You know who could have played center? Is AJ can I think he would have been a badass center, to be honest with you, but they never went that route because they had Linder, and I get it. But how do you like them apples? Throw that offense together. That's a pretty good looking offense on paper, especially if my quarterback gets better. The underrated part of that oh, I'm saying. the underrated part of that line, if that was your starting five, yeah. is you've got a hell of a lot of depth. Yeah. On that. You you've got swing guys and the you've size. got dudes that have oh my Look god. Look at the size of the line. Now Shatley's not the like he's not massive. Linder is. For a center, but look at that. Yeah, obviously coming the big, at you with obvi- attitude. Obviously, the big question mark in that is Walker Little playing guard. You're just not sure. I fight He's this big battle too. I fight this battle back and forth because I don't know enough about the X's and O's of offensive line play. But when I talk to you, you seem to be more open to guys potentially playing guard, going from tackle yeah. to guard, kind of yeah. depending on their body size and whatever. Yeah. Certain guards play. Like, I, I don't think Robinson's a guard. Right. I wouldn't. I could move him to right tackle, right. but he's not a guard. Every time opinion. I ask Leon about guys, he's almost always against it. Yeah. So I, him, well, that's because he's probably coming from a tackle perspective. I'm coming right. from a team perspective. Right. Like if he's the if he's my best left guard. Look, look, here's the thing. I always say this. I've said it for years. Nothing happens in the NFL without reason. Okay. Just remember that statement. Why? Because if Doug Peterson and company believed that Walker Little was their left tackle, guess what? They would have let Cam walk. Absolutely. So Absolutely. they don't believe that he's the left tackle. Maybe the right tackle. Okay, fine. No problem. I would have liked them to go after that Roger Saffold guy. I forget where he went, but he, he's a he's a mean, big guard. He would have been a great guard to add. Uh, and then you could maybe throw Little out to tackle. But I like that. Um and I tell you, uh, I like Neil. I, I'm still going there. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you why in just a little bit. I do want to go around. Um, or let's just let's just address Urban Liar real quick because now it's out. Now t- players are talking. You know, it's amazing that a guy like that got away with what he was getting away with for so long. You know, in college, I get it. You know, there is a little bit of a fear factor. Coffin had it. Now Coffin wouldn't threaten like supposedly tough guy Urban did. But you knew that if you screwed up, you're getting in big trouble. I mean, you're either running. Uh, he would look. You, you screw up enough. You're going home. I mean, disciplinary stuff, not on the field stuff. But you screw up on the field. You're running extra. You're getting yelled at. I mean, that was just the way it was. You were in fear of losing your job. You weren't in fear of losing your scholarship. Um, I never got in enough trouble. By the time by the time he got there, I got I matured out of my trouble. <laughs> I did, um, and thank goodness, because it would have been awful. Um, but you know, he—it wasn't like he would threaten that, you know. But I—I I was afraid. I was, I was afraid of him in the beginning, I guess. But you know, look, my father, uh, God rest his soul, he would always say, "Look, you got to respect your coaches at all times. There's no doubt about it." But when you become 18, you become a man. You can go fight for this country. You become a man. You're allowed to stick up for yourself. I don't care who it is, with respect. With respect, not disrespectful, not any of that kind of crap. But if you believe in something and your coach believes in the opposite and you feel like you have to stand up for that, you go do that. You're a grown man. That's what men do. So I was never afraid to express my opinion like that because my dad said it was okay and he was the toughest guy in the world. So I didn't, I was good in that regard. And I did it respectfully, you know, but this, this whole thing that, um, you know, the guys were afraid of him, staff members. I mean, this guy's really out there. You know, you take the James Robinson benching. He benches him, benches him, then blames it on Parmalee, and then tells his staff, oh, you misinterpreted what I said. Urban Liar. Listen, that, that nickname's been going around with him. I'll never, when, we, when we got him, my buddy who played at BC lives up in Cleveland. He's like, oh, you got Urban Liar. He's a liar, T-Mac. You just wait. He's a big-time liar. That's why they call him Urban Liar. It's amazing to me that he was allowed to do what he could do, even in college, to be that way. 
He was untouchable. That fame got to his head. He was like above the law. Think about it. He controlled everything. I, I was told up in Columbus, he controlled everything. He had no, he was untouchable, could do anything. If he did something he wasn't supposed to be doing, they covered it up. They shoved it under the rug. They protected him. Why? The price of winning, baby. The I was price say. of winning. I'm a I'm a, a national championship. Well, you're you're you know, your coach is a piece of garbage. Well, I don't care. He's winning his championships. I don't know. It's to me, it's like I would have punched him in the face. I, I mean, I just I, and I know it's easier said than done, but what a what a jerk. What a jerk and what a narcissistic, crazy lunatic. You're an embarrassment. What an, I mean, just embarrassing. And he'll come out with his apology or his deflection. He'll come out with some crap. And half of you will believe it, and the other half won't believe it. And I'll be that other half. Um, you know, you are what you are. Whatever. Whatever. Just not my cup of tea, man. And I don't have no halo over my head. Trust me. That's why I'll never run for office. Because if you dig deep enough, you're going to find out about the incident on the hill at Boston College. I was just defending myself, but I'm sure I'll get ripped for it. I'm just kidding. I only hit him once. He deserved it. But nonetheless, Urban, you know, I don't know. I just, bleh, I, I, I'm almost disgusted that I even got to bring his name up again. You know, it's just like, come on. What's wrong with you? You know, that's the problem with these famous people, man. They think they're above the law. They can say anything, do anything. They're, whatever they say goes. Their opinion matters more than anybody else's. It doesn't. It doesn't. The majority of us don't really care. But it's amazing. It is amazing. Whether you're looking at Urban Meyer or Deshaun Watson, but the price of winning and what you're willing to do. I don't know. I don't know if I like it. I do think the league has to suspend Deshaun Watson. Now, check this out. So he got a $45 million signing bonus up front. <laughs> His base is $1 million. In case he gets suspended. In case he gets yep. suspended. That's part of why the signing bonus is so big. The signing bonus is his, is his first-year salary. <laughs> hey, you look, I always say this. You're not paying for what they did. You're paying for what you hope they're going to do. Talent-wise, he's worth the $45 mil. He is. But unbelievable. Um, and, and what? And I know not all Browns fans are saying, oh, yeah, I know a lot of you are saying, eh. A lot of you, though, are like, oh, here we go. You know, we're going to win a title. Maybe you will. At the price of what? And I know it's still he said, she said. But I, I know. I know. I'm not. I'm not. All I'm saying, with 22, give a percentage of who's telling the truth. Be conservative. I don't care. Whatever that number is, it's too many. My book. Anyway. Um Crazy, but he will. I think he and he should get this. The league has to suspend him at least, I think, a year. I do. I think you're out for the year, maybe half a year, but anything less than that to me, it's like you're just well. I think his rug, I think his his legal team is going to argue that he didn't play last year, and like that was basically two years a a good, good, good amount of time then. Oh, I totally agree. I totally agree with you. I, I'm saying I, I think know. that's I think that's the approach they're going to take yeah. to try to get out of this. Yeah. So, I don't know. And maybe they do. Maybe and Deshaun they do. Deshaun is one of those guys, unfortunately, that moves the needle for the NFL. Oh no! Listen, so, he's a great talent. It's too bad he's got all this stuff. Like, and I feel bad for the ladies too. Oh, some of them are making it up. I don't know if they are. I have no idea. But I feel bad. I feel bad. I just. I just. You never know a person till you know a person. You know what I'm saying? Oh, but he's so nice. Uh huh. Oh, but he does so much in the community. I get it. He does, but he's also got this going on, which you had no idea. You never know till you know, right? Uh, Matt Ryan to the Colts. Colts just got better. They did. It's funny. Someone's like, ah, oh, he's no good anymore. So I just wanted to see what he's done. Well, I saw a stat since 2016, he leads the league in yards and fifth in touchdowns. So I don't think his game's declined. His team has. 2016 was a while ago now, though. Since then, he's led oh, the league oh, 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 in oh, yards, oh, oh, oh. and sorry, he's sorry, sorry. fifth with sorry. 100 and okay. whatever, gotcha, 35 gotcha, gotcha. touchdowns. That's not – now. he's I still might, throwing up for a lot. I his might line be, sucked last year. I might be on the on the other side of this. I, I think the Colts got better. Matt Ryan's better than Carson Wentz. Totally. But, in my book, he is. 
I don't know how much better they got. You know what? If Carson was get... the headache that he supposedly is, and Matt Ryan's not, that's true. That's it, a good that, point. That means a lot, and you got a lot of talent. That old line, that tons back, of talent, yeah, tons of talent. Their too, window so. is absolutely right now. Absolutely, and they got a good defense too. So, so I think he's a perfect fit. I look, I t- I think Seattle should go after Baker. I do too. I mean, he fits. He's kind of like uh, Seattle Russ. makes perfect sense for you. Baker. Know what I mean? And yeah. it, I'm not a huge Baker. I think I talk about you know the letter. <laughs> I think those commercials yeah, those got weird. to your head, yeah. buddy. Just, you know, I mean, wham, wham, wham. My gosh, I feel bad. Yeah, yeah. This is it. I'm sorry. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Seattle. The two, I, I think it's a good fit there. The or two maybe teams, New Orleans, although New Orleans is now, you know, they offer, yeah, they, they got, signed uh, Jameis. Yeah, they nice got Jameis, I don't think. The two teams that make the most sense to Baker for me is Seattle and now Atlanta. Yeah. I mean, the, he better hope he goes to Seattle. They play. I think they play more of his offense, unless they're going to change it for him. He's 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 more of a move and throw it guy. He's not a stand only in thing the pocket. Is you're in a throw guy. way big arm division. No. He's got a big arm. Marcus Mariota goes to the Falcons. Oh shoot, Mariota did go to the Falcons. Yep, I forgot. Good for okay, him. Then never mind. Scrap what I said about the Falcons. No, it's okay. Lenny Fournette gets paid. Good job, Leonard. Good for you. Nine million guaranteed. That don't listen now. Nine million, it's not nine hundred million. So forget the private jets and putting all the money on the the board, you know, on the thing, you know, like you used to do. Forget all that, or the in front of all the the Bentleys and all. No, 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 no. You learn your lesson. Hey, you can get a nice Mercedes, used one too, for nice money. Save that money, man. Nine million, good for you. That's guaranteed money for Leonard Fournette at this point in his career. That's fantastic, and I'm happy for him. You know what? He earned it. He earned it. Yeah, absolutely. Earned um, it. and I'm glad he bounced for back. Sure. Great. You know, I'm I'm glad he did because that was that was good. All right, let me let me wrap it up with this because Aiden Hutchinson's got me a little concerned. Okay, um, and it, I didn't know this, but I remember his father uh, played his father Chris played at Michigan when we played them in '91. I remember Hutchinson. Um, you know, here's my question: So, who do you compare him to? You know, I've seen uh, Kyle Vandenbosch as a comparison. Who was what solid player, right? Kyle Vandenbosch played for the uh, Titans and the Cardinals, I believe, and he was he was he was solid to very good, right in that range. Yeah, I don't think he was a superstar, dominant B plus player. Was he B plus? Okay, B, B, let's say B B plus. Good. Yeah, perfect. I would take that all day long. Great, but who who else do you compare him to? You know, since you're taking him number one, supposedly, Miles Garrett. Hello, Graham. No, you don't. How about Demarcus Lawrence? For the Cowboys? Okay. Cam Jordan? Max Crosby? Okay. See, that's okay. So, I, and I agree with you. So, I'm sitting there going, okay, right. so why am I forcing this number one pick to be him? Be, not because I need it. Forget need. Right? I know you need him. But how about this? There are other, you know, Jermaine. If you had Neil and Jermaine Johnson hypothetically out of FSU, Shoo. I mean, wouldn't you love that? You you dress both, and then you can still. And again, we just went through their 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 targets. They've got targets. They need to add, but so you had Neil, you got maybe Johnson. You know, the kid um from Georgia is really good. I don't know if I'm taking him that high, but maybe if he falls, Nickobe Dean, no, Jordan um, Davis. Oh well, Jordan Davis, I. Call me crazy. I might take him first overall. <laughs> if you know what I mean, he may be my my uh, dark horse. Like I'm going because that guy, wow, unbelievable. Um, no Walker, I think's his last name. Um, Tavon Trayvon Walker, I think. I forget what number he is, but he's he's uh, from Georgia, defensive end, rated high. But I look Johnson's a beast. I mean, if you can get Neil Johnson, are you kidding me? That'd be a that'd be a huge win. So. Oh, and then throwing Joey Boza in that. Is he is he Joey Boza coming up? No. Oh, so that's I, what I'm saying. Like, so. why if you can't say that, you didn't you said no and a maybe to all of them. How do you take him number one? Except like Max Crosby. <laughs> and Max is a really good he player. Is a really good he's player. a really good player. Super he good ain't player. no 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 slouch in the group at all. And he's he's really and then look, four three D end. 3-4 D end. I don't think he's big enough for a three four D end. I know he's two sixty five or two seventy, but I don't know about that. Now, one thing concerns me. Call me crazy. 
but his arm length is only 32 and an eighth inches. If he was an offensive lineman, we'd downgrade him significantly for short arms, especially as a tackle. Maybe not a guard so much, but as a tackle, you'd say, oh, those are short arms. Why? Because long arms win at those outside positions. They keep you what? Away, right? Or they get you out of the way. You know what I'm saying? And another thing I saw about him is, to, and I, I just did a little research. I Look, he had a great senior year. I, a ton of credit. 14 sacks, 16 and a half tackles for loss. I know he didn't do much in the Georgia game, but aside from that, he had a, he had a great year. Okay? I would expect it more, whatever. It is what it is. I know there's other factors that, that go into that. But his negatives from what these, call them pundits, whatever, not great against the run, average against the run. I don't like that. Um, I wrote it on the note. Does he have the hands? Because, look, you see him at, even against Ohio State, he gets into the guy, he pushes him. He's a, he's a weight room freak, supposedly. So he's very strong. He should be with short arms. Just saying, shorter the arms, stronger you should be, in my opinion. Um, and it's I think it's physics. Physics, factual, something like that. Um, he doesn't have any counter moves. He just in and, I mean, you really, you know, you can't compare him to Boza Brothers because their hands are ridiculous. Ridiculous. And you, if you're a DN out there, study those hands and how they get the hands off the, uh, you know, the, their body and get to the QB. So I don't know, man. I don't know. I and mean, I got nothing against the kid whatsoever. I wish him nothing but the best. But if I'm sitting there at number one, and you can't you can't force it because of need. You you can't. I don't think. I don't think. Number one player in the draft, you go with the number one player. Aside from QB, because you don't, that's the caveat. You don't, you're not gonna do a QB. And there isn't one to take there, I don't think. I mean, you could say, well, let's someone trade up. Well, okay, maybe. Maybe. Look, on paper, Hutchison looks like the real deal. I don't think I think he's going to be okay. I don't think he's going to be anything great. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong, especially if we take him. I want him to be awesome. You know, be the next Tony Brack or something like that. Make something make something happen. Shoot, be, be Joe Schwingy, baby. Paul Spicer. Just come on. Um, but I do like my Neil Jermaine Johnson combo. Are you kidding? Oh, man. How you talking, baby? I mean, you just addressed major needs with top players in the draft. Yeah, but what the hell do I know? I- <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. That's going to do it for me this time around. I think I got all my notes taken care of. I did. I tell you, you know, again, you look on paper, and the Jags are they're 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 coming together, baby. They're coming together. Doug Peterson's drinking coffee. Coffee's for closers, right? You ever seen Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross? Go watch that movie. Do me a favor. Just Google it and watch it. I wish I could say one of my favorite lines. What's my name? You is my name. <laughs> One of the best lines. All right, I got to go. Time to keep it rocking all throughout the week. Uh, I will not be back on Friday. I have to travel for a speaking engagement. I'm sorry, but I, you know what? I'll, I'll, uh, I know, I know I've been, I've been inconsistent, but we'll figure something out. I'll do, I'll make it up to you somehow. All right, that'll do it though. Right here on 1010XL's podcast platform or 1010XL.com on Facebook as well. Thank you for tuning in on the relevant app, the group messaging chat app with live interactive podcast. You see my shirt with the R and that a cool logo. I like it. I like this shirt. Thinning, you know, black keeps thin. I love it. All right. Till next time. Stay safe and be cool. We'll see you right here on Catching Up with Tommy Mac.